What's up, y'all? It's T Turn. Today, we're looking at more of y'all's theories for the Indigo Disc. Y'all, today is the final day. The Indigo Disc comes out tomorrow. Come back to my channel, episode one, around like 10 a.m., y'all. So, check it out, y'all. Before we go to y'all's theories, I was playing the Teal Mask last night. I've almost beaten it. I don't know how to tell y'all this. We got to talk about Dokutaro. I made a video last night, if you want, I'll link it at the end of this, where I have a pretty good idea of what Dokutaro is, which if I were to just kind of poke at what I said in that video, it's the idea that there was a tree in Area Zero in, you could say ancient times, but like around, let's say like a few hundred years ago. And this tree, it was all terrestrialized and it yielded special fruits, peaches. The same fruits he calls wondrous fruits when he speaks of legends of stuff that could exist down there. These are all peaches that have terrestrial energy inside them. So they're special and they're just peaches. But because they have that potentially dream energy inside them, one of them mutated and gained conscious life. That's Dokutaro. And what Dokutaro does is he grabs other peaches and he feeds them to creatures to grant them the toxic chains and put under his command. So he's like the master peach. So that's the theory I'm going into this indigo disc with. But y'all, yeah, there's another thing we got to talk about. So I took some notes because last night I'm trying to finish the teal mask. I'm almost done it. But I'm watching everything happening as I'm playing from the perspective of trying to find two things out. One, can Kieran be the old man with ogre pun in ancient times because of a time loop? And then two, is somehow Dokutaro possessing Kieran? Because I don't like the idea. So I'm on the fence. I'm trying to disprove this crap. And so let me open by saying this sucker is possessed. Yeah, it's, it's, this is too much a coincidence. I'm going to break down all the notes I took. Now, I want to say a more softer term that's to my liking, which is that he's infected. And as you'll see as I go through this, Kieran isn't just straight up Dokutaro. It's more so like Doku Taro at some point in the Teal Mask, he got into Kieran's head and he's just chilling in there. And so what he really does, this is just my theory, what Doku Taro really does in Kieran's head is he just makes Kieran more unstable. So it's still Kieran making all of his choices, but Doku Taro's kind of made him more unhinged. Maybe Doku Taro's puppeteering him, but that's not what I'm going to talk about in this video. I think it's more fun to look at it as just Doku Taro is a troublemaker. And he's just making trouble in Kieran's mind by making him unhinged. So from the moment you enter Kitakami and meet Kieran, his character is very simple. We got the younger brother who's shy. We got the older sister who punks him off. But they still very much care for each other. And they're the closest people to each other. Even though Kieran doesn't have anyone, his sister's still the closest person to him. But Kieran's character at the start of the story is very simple. He's too shy to want to be your friend. And Carmine knows Kieran is lonely and would want a friend. So she tries to set you up with him. And he's so out of his comfort zone, he almost resists pairing up with you and being your friend. But it works out because for the first time, it starts to open Kieran up. And the whole idea of the three signboards is to see the transition from when he's barely making the peace sign because he's so shy and self-conscious to being more happy with you. What Kieran's story really is, is him just making a friend. I'm watching closely. Everything that happens with Kieran is normal. Completely normal. Even when you're hanging out with his sister and he doesn't like it, that's normal brother-sister arguing. He's like, darn man, you, you hanging out with him too much. He was my friend. There's nothing wrong with that. Everything's normal about Kieran until you lie to him. That's the moment stuff starts to properly change. After we lie to him and walk away, he says the big line, why did you lie to me? And y'all, Dokutaro's speech is intentionally put in frame as if it's part of the focus. You're just not supposed to notice it right now. Y'all, they could have chosen any location for this lying scene to happen. If Kieran finds comfort in Ogre Pond and he was feeling sad, he would have gone to the Ogre Pond signs. But Game Freak wanted to set up this like symbolic moment that Dokutaro slides into his mind. It's after you lie to him here that Kieran's character changes. Then he battles you and when you beat him, his fist starts clenching. Then it starts to show ominous close-ups of his face where he's mad. And then when you beat him, he starts scratching his hair violently, turns around and punches the shrine, leaks that purple energy. There's definitely something happening here. At this moment that he's scratching his hair, even Carmine says, dude, I know you, something is off with you today. I'm the biggest person against Dokutaro manipulating Kieran's mind, but I'm 99% sure now 
he's infected in some way by Dokutaro. And it's perfect. He's infected by Dokutaro. He punches the shrine. He resurrects the three. And then when the loyal three are resurrected, first thing they do is it's kind of a comedy scene. They look at Carmine and you, and then they huddle together and start talking, and then they all bounce. They're probably talking about how they got resurrected, and the idea that Dokutar is probably around somewhere, and he's back. The game does a good job of covering up all of his oddities by saying, you know, he's a kid growing up, so he's just acting out. But it's very obvious there's a second underlying thing happening here. And Carmine even says, right after Kieran punches the shrine, what brought these dudes back to life? As if this is not supposed to be normal. Something that just happened in front of our face triggered something, which is Kieran interacting with that shrine. From this point onward, Kieran is still himself, but he's just more unhinged. And that's the best way I can put this. He's not suddenly just flipped the switch and now it's Doku Taro who's playing the second half of the Teal Mask. It's different to hear theories, but it's another to be replaying the Teal Mask and seeing the obvious flow of events suddenly change the moment you lie to him and Doku Taro's peach is in sight and they immediately start giving him ominous energy. So that's that. I'll save the time loop points for different because I don't want to give you too much to think about. But yeah, he's definitely... And it's not possessed. I don't I don't like possessed. I'm going to say he's infected. If I were to say just one last thing before we go to theories, it's that I don't understand why they narratively chose to make him like infected by Peachy Boy. Because he meets the Loyal 3 later in the DLC. And the Loyal 3 look at him and just run off. So if Dokutaro has that much control over Kieran, he would have just regrouped with the Loyal 3 right at that scene. That's around where I stopped playing. So either he doesn't care about the Loyal 3 like that, or he doesn't actually have that kind of control over Kieran. He's just in his mind. All right, let's go to y'all's theories. I got to hear what y'all say about the Dokutaro Peach idea. Gira and Dokutaro. Hey, Titar, been following all your theory videos over the past few days, and I think you've gotten pretty close to the truth. However, I think these revelations slightly change how Gira fits into this. I think her story is more of a side content thing, but let me know what you think. Just Game Freak, please give her some value. Don't make her pointless. Maybe in the same way Dokutaro was born, she was a fruit too from Area Zero who gained sentience, but instead she was a good fruit or good version of Dokutaro and then escapes Area Zero, finds a human to latch onto, and takes over their mind like Dokutaro did with Kieran. Oh, I thought you are saying Gita what? Okay, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. So check it out, right? In the code of the Indigo Disc, we don't have room for Pokemon past Dokutaro. So we can't have like a counterpart to Dokutaro where it's good. But what we can have is two Dokutaros who are identical in every single way. But one just chooses to be a troublemaker and latch on to Kieran. And one chooses they just gonna hang out and have fun. And they latch on to up and coming trainer Gita and is hanging on the surface as top champion. Y'all, that would be cool. That would be pretty fun for Gita, y'all. She got the whole Glamora outfit and hair. Her secretly just being uh, infected by a less troublesome Dokutaro is freaking badass. Uh, yes. Anyway, I'll shank that like button. I'm gonna look at more of y'all's ideas later. And I will tell y'all all the points I took about Kieran being in a time loop when I played the game. Y'all, if this happens, I'll be so gassed. But yeah, I'll see y'all later today. Take care.